Amen. We got to be examples. Amen. We got to be examples, amen, for these young people because the thing about it is they know. I'm going to say this, amen, the Lord will let uh, a lot of this, but like I said, we're doing the judgment work. Mm -hmm. And our work is going to be tried by fire. Yes. Lord Jesus. I say what I was telling them again, when they come to the house of the Lord, it's something for everybody to yes. do. Yes. The Bible says many hands make light work. Yes. Amen. So I learned this example, amen, when we was growing up, amen, um, you know, a lot of the older churches, they had pools pretty much right over the pool pier that built in the back. Yeah. I was built in the back and one of them concrete slabs. And so when it was time for somebody to get baptized, amen, we, um, we, would, we had buckets and stuff and we would dip the pool out by hand. And I grew up doing that. When we go, man, most of the time my dad and a couple of the other young brothers and stuff, and we'd dip it out by hand and we'd put the holes in there. And then one time the Lord looked like people were getting baptized a lot. And I said, man, because every time you turn around, but we was out, but that was our job. Well, it wasn't until I got to high school, and I was, I was grew up in the city. I didn't know nothing about all that. But I, I found out when I got maybe about 14 and 15 that they had a thing called a sump pump that I pumped the water out by myself. And I began to ask my dad, hey man, how long did I have? He said, well, some pump been around. I go, we couldn't get one. <laughs> but I'm saying I like to say I thank God, but that we knew when somebody, I was saying, okay, somebody would get baptized, but that was just something that we did. Amen. But the thing is, I always remember the people say, what you do for God, God will bless you for it. God will keep you for it. See, we got to have something to tell the Lord. Sometimes as saints, we get down in our bodies. I heard the testimony today. We get sick, things happen. We got to have something that we can tell the Lord. Yes, sir. Let's go to the book of, uh, amen, we got 2 Kings, amen, <clears throat> chapter 20. We're not going to be long, but I thank God. And like I say, amen, amen, and the word applies to everybody, but we got to have something, amen, that we can, we can tell God this is, a, this is a serious thing that we're doing. Amen. This is 2 Kings 20 and verse 1. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Mm -hmm. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus said the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Yes. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto oh, the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah looked sore. Hold it right there. All right. He said, Hezekiah was sick on the death. The prophet came to him and said, Get your house in order. You finna die and Lord not Jesus. live. Lord Jesus. Now he's already sick. And I imagine he had been asking the Lord to heal him. And now here comes the prophet saying, Get your affairs in order because you fixing to leave here. Hezekiah, he said, he turned his face unto the Lord. Yes. They say, Remember now, yes. Lord. Yes. How I walk before you, yes. too. How I've done that, which is good in our yes. sight. Sometimes we get in a situation as Christians, whether it's sickness, whether it's whatever it is, but we got to be able to turn to the wall and say, Lord, remember. Yes. My question that I ask for you today, and young people, same thing, because what you do for the Lord, it counts. But you got to have something that you can go to the Lord and say, Lord, remember. Amen. It's sad to say, but a lot of people, they be in trouble. The only thing they can tell them is, Lord, have mercy. Mm. See, the old people used to say, you do things for the Lord, they put fruit on your account. Mm. They begin to build, and then you, when you go to the Lord, when you get in trouble, because I'm telling you, trouble time coming. Amen. It don't make no Amen. difference. You don't got to get old trouble time coming. Amen. But you got to have something to tell God to remember you from. Lord, I was faithful in coming to your yes. service. Yes. Something to tell God. I, I remember this when I was also young. Know, we had a church van. And a church van come, and it, it, would, it would depend. There would be some weeks my dad would drive it. It would be some weeks that another deacon would drive it. But the week I would drive it, I always sit shotgun because some of the older ladies, and we had one sister, and man, they couldn't see and different things. But it was my job to jump out, go and knock on the door. So, amen, church started at 8 o'clock. Amen, the, the, the church van, the church van was going to be pulling up by about 7.30. But 
I mean, we had to get dressed in the man, be out about seven riding. And he said, now you can shot, man. hurry up and get ready. We got to go. And so I get out and I knock. Most of the time they say, hold on a minute, or sometimes they be ready. But I sound like to say, I remember a lot of times, oh, and if it was raining, you had to have an umbrella, go out there and get the sisters and do all that. But I was ready because that was my job as a shotgun man to run out there and knock on the doors. But the thing is, you got to have something to tell God. Hey, we come to the house of the Lord. This is God's house. Amen. I'm not talking about our house. Amen. This is God's house. Lord Jesus. God's house got to take more importance than our house. Some of y'all don't believe that. Amen. I'm going to say that again in case the camera won't roll. God's house got to mean more than our house. Amen. People get saved here, healed, delivered. Set free. The word of God comes forth. Encourage to one another. Testimony. And this is the house where all things are possible. Amen. But sometimes we forget about it. Amen. Right. Young people. Like I said, and young people most of the time have energy and want to do something. Put them to work. Put them to work. You say, well, I want to do something. I don't know what to do. Find the pastor. I guarantee you, he got a list of stuff. Yeah. I know because my dad, he always had a list of stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen. God, he, he, said, he said, when we get through with this, I want you to do this. Not that he, but he, it was, he always had stuff in his mind that he, well, that we got to do this with you. If you don't believe me, sit down with him one day and you'll be sitting there going, how's he thinking all this stuff? But the pastor, God, give oversight. He had all kind of stuff. See, the Bible said that the harvest is truly great, but the labels are few. Pray that the Lord will send labor into the harvest. We need people now that's ready to go to work for the Lord. Everybody want to preach, but don't nobody want to work. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, So many times, there's so many things. We, we have uh, pecan trees at our church, and the way they grow and they hang down, and about, you don't cut them about once every year or two. <clears throat> they start hanging down on the roof and they cause problems. And they, if you let trees that grow out into your roof. And so we had, you know, I didn't never mind doing it. I get up on the get up on the ladder, get up on the roof, walk around on there. <clears throat> and man, when I always knew my, in myself, I usually go and cut them about March before it get real hot, because it's real hot on the roof when it's when they get hot. However hot it is on the ground, it's much hot, higher you go the hotter it is. So I was smart. I was waiting about March. It wasn't getting about decent. I didn't want to go up there when it was real cold either. So I waited about March, go up there. So we had a brother, and um, he lived, I mean, down the street from the church. The same man, uh, you know, such and such a thing. Well, man, I'm, 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 I'm afraid of heights. I said, all right. So I didn't mind do it, you know what I mean, because it was what, but I say all that to say, you want to take a guess, the person that still get up on the roof and cut the trees down every March? I still mean, but the thing is, I'm saying that not to talk about myself, I'm saying that is, it's got to be done and you know it, yeah. and something in the house, it, it, this house don't keep itself. That's right. Somebody got to do everything. And the thing about it is, is that when you come up, amen, you go through as a brother, you know, all the different stuff. And, you know, the same thing, like you got all the committees. Sisters, same thing. Uh, baptism, it's somebody's job to keep them towels and rolls, rocks and wicked. When it's time to baptize, it is right here. Some of y'all been in the church and like, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. When it's time to pray for the all, Amen. To pray for somebody, that all supposed to be there. Amen. That was my job. And one time, that all wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And it only happened one time. Mm -hmm. I had to hear about that. But, but the thing is, everything in here, nothing is kept by itself. Yeah. Amen. And everybody got a job to do. Like I said, young people, get involved. Old, old, older saints already should have, have something. And, and like I said again, it ain't no such thing as no bench member. That's the biggest thing that changed me from the time I was a child until what I see now, a lot of time in the body of Christ. 
Everybody ain't no musician, but I remember when I was growing up, everybody had something yeah. to say, praise the Lord. Right. I don't care if it was little maracas or a tambourine or rug board. I don't seen bell cows, you name it. But everybody had something because they wanted to give praise yeah. to the Lord. Right. Now I come to church and I see a lot of people, they main thing, they sit down and say, entertain me. Like God ain't done nothing for you. Oh, I mean, I heard my wife's testimony. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell you something. And we're going to get back to work. But I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> Myself, as a person, it wasn't much in life, and I've been through some things. And I'm, there's not much that scared me or not much that really bothered me until I got married. And I had a spouse. And I, and I realized I was responsible for what happened. I'll never forget one time. She got sick. She had an ear infection. And I was praying and stuff like that. And it looked like the ear infection got worse. And she said, I'd go to the emergency room. And I was believing God. And I didn't know if I would take her. And then, but I was sitting there also in my mind thinking, better take her. I said, I don't want to explain to her dad why he didn't know. But the thing is, when you get a spouse and you get children, things that you didn't know, sometimes, man, you just be like, Lord, have mercy. Yeah. But the thing is, when you pray, when you look to God and, and things like that, God will deliver. Yeah. See, it ain't, the, thing, the, thing that we, the thing that we have that we forget about is that all our help comes from the Lord. That's right. We want God to move on our behalf. We be praying, why, even while we pray, right now, Lord. Yeah. Because we know that he's a faithful creator. Yeah. We can, we can, I can depend on God, but can he depend on us? Can he depend on us? He said, I need somebody to go. He said, here am I, send me. Ready to go to do the work of the Lord. Young people. I, where's Breon? Thank God for that young man's his birthday. Yeah. Uh, the other day. Yeah. Thank God for, for my nephew. Yeah. The Lord saved him growing up to be a fine young man. I was watching him. I'm 16. Mm -hmm. All right. I got my license at 16. By the time I got my license, we had three churches and we'd be moving. The church we see now, the one where I come from, the one in Gainesville. I learned how to drive on the highway driving the church services. Mm -hmm. Now I learned how to drive. Mm -hmm. By the time I got my license, you got a license, good. We got another driver. I would never ride with my parents. I was driving the church van and driving somebody else. But I learned how to drive. Now, now some of y'all will say, well, what about this? What about that? I learned how to drive going to church. Going to the service of the Lord. I learned how to I learned highway driving going to the going to service of the Lord. And sometimes them deacons and them be like, hey man, you were slow. You got to keep up with the caravan. Yeah, don't, don't, don't get ahead of us now. Don't be switching. You know, but I learned how to highway drive going back and forth to church. How many hear what I'm saying? I'm not saying all this except what I'm saying is. Our lives, amen, as saints of God, even the young people, it's got to be centered around the Lord. Yes. Yes. We done confuse this thing. We done got it now when we fit God in when we can. That's right. And we wonder what now happened in the church. That's right. That's Where's the power? What's wrong with the priest? I hear all of it. <laughs> you got to put that mirror up to you this morning. Is God in the center of my life or have I found a way that you're squeezing me in when I can? Uh -huh. Come on, I'm talking to everybody because this is the judgment work that we're doing. Okay. Verse number three. Start at three. Come on down. Second Kings chapter 20, verse 3. Uh -huh. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth with the perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight, and has a kind of sword. And it came to pass, before Isaiah was going out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus said the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, 
Behold, I will heal thee on the third day. Thou shalt go unto the house of the Lord. Hold on right there. All right, now he sent the prophet. The prophet delivered his message, and the prophet was gone. Before the prophet could get out of the middle gate, the Lord spoke to him again. In other words, not only did he, he heard the prayer of Hezekiah quickly, because Hezekiah had something to tell God. He turned the prophet to tell around, tell him I heard his prayer, I seen his tears, amen, and that I will hear you. How many want, how many want, how many want God to respond to them like that? See, when I get in trouble and I call out to God, I want him to answer. If he takes as much time to get to you as some of us take to get to him, we might not make it. Come on, we talk, we come on, y'all. We talking about holiness. We talking about doing this right because everybody quick to say, we thank God for being here, we thank God for holiness. We got this is holiness. I heard him say, follow peace with all men and holiness. Without which no man will see the Lord. Sometimes, amen, we forget. Sometimes we get it in our mind. We ain't got no special favors with God. When you've done all that you know to do, the Bible says you've just done your duty, you're still an unprofitable servant. Yeah. That's when you've done, done everything you know to do. Yeah. Now, when you be honest with yourself, am I doing everything that I know to do? I'll be the first one to answer. I'm not quite there. But I want to get there. And with the help of the Lord, I'm going to get there. Everything that the Lord has on my plate to do, I want to do it. Right. So he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter yeah. into the joy of the Lord. Because I don't want to hear the other response. Depart from me. I never knew your works was up and with me. I don't want to hear that. That's when you say them, 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 the young people were singing, and my wife was singing about Judgment Day. That day is coming. Yes. Problem is, some of us take it light. Some of us think what we're doing, well, I'm just doing this. What, I, what we do for God, let's do it to the best of our ability. Yes. And he'll bless you. Yes. And he'll keep you. A lot of times I know for a fact that the Lord... There were things that when the enemy set a trap for you, and the Lord let you just go right on on. He, he'd give you a way to escape yeah. because he looked down and he could remember what you've done. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 6. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. 15 years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. All right. Hold up. He said, he said I'm going to add to you. 15 years. Yeah. He didn't ask for it, but God added 15 years of life based on the way he had lived. Yeah. Now, we need some extra time, and I'm not answering this is what they call a rhetorical question. How much time could he add to your life? 15 minutes? 15 weeks? One year? We got to have something to tell God, y'all. That's right. We got to have some works on our account. Yeah. Not that work, not that works is going to save you. Mm -hmm. That ain't what I'm saying. You got to have a Bible salvation. Mm -hmm. That's right. But you also got to have something to tell God. I mean, let's go to, um, that's 1 Corinthians 10 chapter. <clears throat> We're not going to be terribly long. I thank God for, amen, but we, we, got, to, we got to know, amen, that we got to have something to tell God. So many people get caught up with this. Me. You, oh, you, you look at what happened on Sunday morning. You look at what happened on Sunday morning. Amen. That's Acts 10. I'm sorry. It's not first it's Acts 10 chapter. You look at what happened on Sunday morning and you hear the singing, you hear the preacher. Most of what go on in the church and all the behind the scenes stuff happened Monday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. By the time you see a preacher standing up here on Sunday morning, he'd have been in a war or two. All type of things that had to be done. But some people, they look and see Sunday morning, oh, hell of a preach. He did. But Monday through Saturday, boy, he done went through some everything. 
I mean, all type of things that had to go on at the church. So the, the, this happened, or somebody got to do this, or somebody got. There's always the, the, the behind the scenes things that make a church run. Yes, sir. A lot of times, people look at the look at the Sunday morning, and that's the finished product of it. By the time you get to Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, 11 15, all kind of stuff that done been. There's a lot of stuff that has to happen for that to, for that to go down. If you just get here at 11 o'clock, so what thing I'll be in, you done miss the work. You done miss most everything. I'm sorry, Acts the 10th chapter, start at the first verse. Acts chapter 10, and then verse 1. Mm -hmm. There was a certain man in Sicilia called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian man. A devout man. A devout man religious. And one that feared God with all his house. Mm -hmm. Which gave much alms to the people. Okay. And prayed to God all. He saw in the vision evidently about the nine hours of the day an angel of God coming into him. And saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. And said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. All right, hold it right there. Yeah. All right, the Bible talk about them in this time. The salvation was to the Jews. God began to deal with Peter, amen, but he had a, a, an Italian man called Cornelius. He said he was a religious man, and he filled God with everything he had, amen, and he gave much honor to the people, amen, and the, and the angel coming to him saying, he said that thy prayers and thy giving have come up for a memorial before God. In other, in other words, God recognized this man's praying and giving. Yes. And he said it's come up as a memorial for God. Yes. In other words, God watched the way we pray. Amen. God watched the way we give. Yes. See, we got to understand that God, there's a record of all of this stuff. You might not remember it. You might not count it. You might not look at it. We miss church. There's a record of it somewhere. A record. Y'all like I'm making this up. Them books gonna be open one day. There's a record of it somewhere. Yes. God knows whether you really had an emergency or whether you was chilling. Amen. When it's time to go to work, the pastor might say we're gonna do a church cleanup. I'm going to solicit, you know, whoever da 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 with the whole body, what you call it. It's a record. So, because of the way our church was small, that was my thing to coordinate all of that. And I got to a point where we, I said, Dad, you know, we got it. You just, you know, just tell us kind of what you need or, you know, whatever. But I remember this, and I don't forget it. He said, no. He said, I appreciate that. He said, but I'm going I'm I'm, I'm to show up. He said, because I got to set the example. I said, on me. He said, if I don't do nothing but just sit there and get y'all a drink of water while y'all doing it. You know, because my, my dad had both of his hips replaced. And I didn't stop him from working and trying to do stuff. But I, when I used wisdom, he got to a point where I said, Dad, I mean, we got this. But the thing was, he told me, he said, no, he said, I want to set the example. He said, so I want to be there if I don't do nothing but pass out cold drinks. Yeah. Well, I'm saying all that to say the mind we got to have toward the things of God, it's going to pass our own stuff. Yeah. If we take care of the things of God, he'll take care of our things. Yes. How many believe that? Yeah. I dare anybody to tell me, somebody that's got their life invested in God, invested in his work, and God don't provide for them. God don't take care of them. God, you can't show me a person like that. Because if you take care of the things and the people of God, he's going to take care of you. And I'm a witness to that. I'm a witness to that. Let's go right quickly to um, Mark. I mean, not, not Mark. I'm sorry. The book of Matthew 9. And I believe it's 37. We're just about done. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Uh -huh. Then said he unto his disciples, uh -huh. The harvest truly is plenteous, plenteous, but the laborers are few. Uh -huh. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. See, the harvest is great. Yeah. Amen. He said, but the laborers are few. 
I mean, God got all kind of work that need to be done. We got a we got a world like that that don't know nothing about God. There's all kind of work to be done. But he said the labor's a few. Yes. Amen. When I look at the church today, we still got the same scenario. The harvest is great, but the labor's a few. Now, I also notice this. Jesus took 12 men and changed the whole world. Yeah. Don't need no whole lot. He just need willing work. Yes. Somebody that's going somebody that's gonna be dedicated and, and like the saints said, I mean in the book act that they say that they was addicted to the ministry. I mean, in other words, when it's time to do something, when it's time to go somewhere, amen, like I said, we sing that song, I can depend on God, but my question is, can he depend on you this morning? Because we serve a faith. See, we, we supposed to be, when he come back, he said, we won't be just like him. Yeah. Amen, so when you start looking at the character of God, God begins to say, he's a faithful creator. That is, mercies are new every morning. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Because if it's not for him doing that, if it wasn't because it was for mercy, we'd all be consumed. Yes, yes, that's right. But we serve a faithful creator. Yes, sir. I want to be just like him when he comes. We got a long way to go, y'all. We got a long way to go. We know when we call on God, he will answer. That's right. But, but he also called. Jesus is also called. And you answer the call this morning. When he need hands, when he need feet, when he need a mouthpiece, sometimes he just needs somebody to tell him Jesus loves you. Sometimes he just needs somebody, you know somebody on the sick and shade of this to take him some soup. Yeah. I mean, that's ministry too. How many know what I'm saying? Right. See, some of y'all been saved a long time. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. These saints weren't just sitting there chilling. There was a, there was they, you had the missionary board that was out working, going and seeing about people and sick. I done seen all of that. I remember when the sick sisters and stuff like that, my mom and the mothers and stuff be cooking because I used to, I go with her sometime and carry that stuff in there. I see, that's why I say when you talk about the running of a church, ain't too much because I seen it. Amen. But the thing now is we done got too busy for God. And we're going to have to have something that we can tell for trouble time coming. Remember, oh God. What you got to tell them this morning? If you're busy and you're running for the Lord, keep running. I used to hear the old people say, late in the evening, the sun is almost down. And most of them say, I used to hear say that, they going on now. Now let me know that we really late now. We got to get we got to get running in our feet. Yes. We got to get busy for the Lord. Yeah. And I'm talking about doing, amen, about our father's business. Yeah. Now, all them saints say it's late in the evening, the sun is almost down. Most of them, as I think about, it, they done gone on now. They sun done set. But the Bible tells us to work while it's day. Yeah. Man, we got daylight right now, y'all young people. Y'all got everything ahead of you. It's a good time to learn. How the house of the Lord operate, what goes on, what this, and then you get to be, you know, a certain point, and you'll know what's supposed to go on in the house of the Lord. Right. Not judging, but if something missing or something, what you call it, I pretty much because all, but that's because when we grew up, Amen. That was instilled in us to work in the house of the Lord to do. When we got saved, it was the same thing. It was easy, yes. Amen, because you was already used to working. Everybody has a job. Everybody has something that they can do for the Lord. Amen. So we got that, that the harvest was great. On this one last scripture, we still in Matthew. Go to the 11th chapter in verse 29. Matthew 11 and verse 29. Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon me. And learn of me. And learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. Young people, the best thing you can do is to learn about God. Yes. And get your Bible, you pray, you read, you listen to the preacher and the word of God, you learn what God likes and what he don't like. Okay. Amen. You learn what he do, you see, you walk, you learn to please God so that you can abound more and more. Yeah. Amen. And that you take the Lord with you everywhere you go. Yes. Some people say, well, well, can we do this? Or we can't do that? And we... Let me say something. The Lord can save you as a teenager 
But sometimes the older saints, I think you got to realize that they're still people. Because well, whatever point in life God saved you at, that don't mean that you, if you're a teenager, and God saved you as a teenager, you're still dealing with hormones, pimples, the whole thing. How many of what I'm saying? Amen. They still growing up. They still got to find out who they are. They got God as a helper and there's no better help, but they still got to go through all them stages of life. Right? Amen. Young people, they still got to learn about decision making and all of that stuff. You got to allow for that and not judge it. Young people, this is simple. Sometimes you got things going on. If you can't take Jesus where you're going, Amen. you shouldn't go. It's, it's that simple. If you can't take Jesus where you're going, you ain't got no business going. Amen. Wait a minute. I done missed something. Old people, if you can't take Jesus where you're going, you ain't got no business going. That pretty good dry hand. Yes, sir. This ain't complicated. You just got to want to do what's right. How many believe that? Amen. You just got to want to do what's right. But I say that to young people because sometimes they ain't what we at as far as decision making and seeing all the traps. And see, some of y'all, if we be honest, and we don't do that all the time, but some of us, before the Lord say, well, we done done some everything. And we can tell you about all kind of stuff. But we don't want to because then you used to be into that. Right. However, young people, I say I make it simple. If you can't take God where you're going with you, you shouldn't go. That'll keep you out of a lot of trouble. That'll keep you, amen, when you have a good relationship with God. How many hear me? I'm not telling you what somebody told me. I done been there. See, because let me tell you what happened when you do go somewhere like that. The first thing you do, you get there and you look around. If you got the Holy Ghost, it's going to condemn you. Right. I ain't got no business here. Old people, if you got the Holy Ghost and you get to that, now, he condemn you when you get there. Now, if you done got there, the smart thing to do, Lord, Lord let me get out of here. Lord, I ain't had no business coming here anyway. I'm sorry. Let me... But see, sometimes we, you, they say, you, you, play, you override the spirit. Well, I'm already here. And that's most of the time when you get yourself in trouble. You can't take God there with you. You ain't got no business there. See, that's the thing about the Holy Ghost. He lives on side. You can't lay him down. And then people say, I'm going to lay my religion down. So like, uh, don't worry like that. I don't, I don't, I don't want no salvation like that. I mean, hear what I'm saying? Amen. We thank God for these young people. I'm very, very encouraged. And then by our young people, I see them. They're working hard in school. They're coming to church. They're involved. I'm encouraged by that. Yes. And then whether y'all know it or not, it don't take long this cycle of life to go. Some of them going to be, amen, the president of the future church. Yes. I mean, I used to hear that all the time, and now I'm looking around, and I'm like, they was right about that. Yeah. I didn't ever think I'd be. I didn't want. I didn't want to be no preacher. I used to watch my pastor. Then my, my he died. I watched my dad, and I'd be like, and I seen the sacrifices and all the stuff they went through with people, and I thought, no, oh, thank you. <laughs> I'd rather not deal with any of that. I, I was I was playing the, the keyboard or whatever he wanted me to do, and I said, hey, that, don't worry about that. I got that. You do preaching. Because I know it was a sacrifice. I knew what went into it, and I ain't want no part of it. Lord started dealing with me. I was sitting there thinking, man, Lord, I, this is not. This, this is, I, I have no problem with living right and doing what this, but this, I, I don't want to do that. But the Lord began to deal with me, and the first thing he did was gave me a heart for young people. And I began to see how a lot of times, Amen. In a lot of churches, and thank God, not here, but they were forgotten about things like that. And I and I and I and I went to work, and I started going places and ministering and talking to young people, and it kind of went from there. But I say all that to say, young people, it's something to do for God. See what happened? A lot of time, our young people get in trouble. They be in church and they come to church, and we don't have that for them because the streets got plenty for them. How many of them? 
The streets got plenty for them to do, and none of it ain't good. Amen. I got two girls. I pray for them every day. I talk to them. I mean, I try to instill the word of God in them. I mean, but you best believe, if I have anything, the Lord let me live, I'm going to put them to work. I'm going to show them how all of this stuff in the church works because I want that to come up in them. Yeah. Amen. Because one day, they're going to need this. Yes. Amen. Whether y'all realize it or not, y'all hear, you know, the testimony of that, but you're going to need this yes. one day. Because you're going to go out into a, a, a sinful, trying, wicked, unforgiving world. And the thing about it is, they don't love you. Never make the mistake of thinking the world love you because it don't. World of his own. You've been you've been marred. You got you you you've been marred. You've been set aside for a different. We try it. You can go out there and try it, but you're just gonna get beat up, and then you still gonna realize the world don't love you. Yes. Now, thanks to God, as I tell them, the world don't love it. Don't let it be said true that they don't feel love in the church either. Uh, I'm sorry. Amen. How many hear me? Now we know the love, the world ain't got no love for them. Don't let it be said that the church ain't got love for them either. Come on now. We encourage these children. Listen, yes, yes, sir. if I don't stand up and clap for nobody else, which I'm not, because God been, but if I don't clap for nobody else, when these kids up there, I'm going to get up and That's support right. them. Y'all right. got quiet on me. But it's the truth anyway. Yes. God got quiet. I'm almost done. I mean, matter of fact, I was supposed to be it, but see, I thank God for my reading, my brother. That's my brother-in-law. Thank God for him too. The Lord got a work for his life. He's going to college, getting it. I've been there. I've been there. Y'all pray for these young people. Temptation out there, it ain't, it ain't the same. I'm gonna say this one last thing, and then I'm going to my seat. <clears throat> A lot of times, sometimes older saints, older people have a tendency to say, I've been where you are. I've been 18, 19, 20. I've been there. That's true. But what you have to consider, too, as older people, is that the condition of the world has changed from when you was young. There wasn't no LBGTQ or whatever those letters. And then took our alphabet with this foolishness. That wasn't around then. That stuff was in the closet and it ain't no more. Human trafficking and all of this stuff, that stuff wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like it is now. So our kids, yes, you've been 18. Yes, there are pitfalls that you can tell them to maneuver around. That's absolutely true. And young people, you got to hear every ear. But all the folks got to also know that these, these young people are dealing with some stuff that y'all weren't dealing with. You got to pray for them and encourage them. I've seen stuff, listen, I'm 40, which kind of put me in the middle, but I see stuff now. I, most of y'all don't even know they got synthetic weed. I'm not talking about reefer, what y'all all would call it. I'm not talking about weed, what we call it. They got synthetic weed. I said, they got what? What? We living in a different world now. The music, this rap stuff that they got, people don't know if you sit there, most of it in the line and play it backwards, it's got devil chants and all that stuff is intertwined. When you hear them people say, well, that music got spirits, they ain't lying. I, I know y'all, you know, they had always done had, you know, the temptations and everybody, I, I don't know, some of the older ones, I and mean, we get it, but this stuff now is has got demonic everything. Now. Oh, Jesus. So I'm saying all that to say, we got to pray and encourage these young people. It ain't that you ain't been where you are because they have, but we, they living in a more wicked world than what y'all grew up in. That's true. They living in a more wicked world than what I grew up in. We got to pray for them, encourage them, and have a safe place for them to go because, like I say, that world don't love them. Amen. Right. So, see, the thing is, there's well, something about love that draws you. I don't care how y'all put it, what y'all say. Y'all saw these young people that run along love. They don't want to go nowhere. Come on. I'm, I, 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 all y'all married folks know the same thing. Mm -hmm. 
we love on that spouse. We do. I, I know she like. I know she like cookies. She come home, or she, or she like this and that. All right, I got this for you. She might look and say, "What you do wrong? Nothing. I just thinking about you." How many hear what I'm saying? Love reaches out. Love grabs. Love makes you feel. I just want. I, I just want to know. I was thinking about you. Work the same way with young people. You show them love, they ain't going nowhere. We thank God. I love each and every one of you. I thank God for being here. Amen. I'm asking those that know the words of prayer, amen, to continue to pray for me and my family. Amen. And I ask you to pray my strength in the Lord. Amen. 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 We're thankful, amen, for the service today. Amen. Thank God for, amen, like I say again, Ella Butler and all the saints of God. Amen. Thank God for mother-in-law, mother Butler. Amen. We thank God for, amen, like I said, seeing her. Thank God for seeing Sister Hadley. Amen. Her daughter. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Continuing, amen, to, to keep the saints of God, amen, lifting up in prayer. Amen. Like I said, we, we late in the evening. Amen. We late in the evening. We, you know, we, we always say we're living in the last day. We're living in the last of the last of yeah. the last day. We coming down to it, and we got to be ready. We got to be ready, huh? and, and, and if we ain't ready, we got to be working hard to get ready. I don't want to be a foolish virgin, sit there and know the Lord coming, and then He get ready to go to meet Him, and I don't got my stuff together. Jesus, there were ten virgins, five were wise and five were foolish, and that means about half. So for purposes of a demonstration, I'm going to cut the church in half. Brother Rick is about to have a waypoint. That way, and that way. Hard, it would be hard for me to believe that half wasn't ready, except that I've seen it in the Bible. I'm not casting judgment on nobody because I don't know. It ain't my job. I just know I want to be ready. And you be ready. But like I say, I wouldn't believe that except I seen it in the Bible that five was wise and five was foolish and that's about half. That's right. And we're thankful for them. Amen. The word of God today. Amen. And all of those. Amen. Amen. We ask in the church and in the stand. Mm -hmm.